Logan Kane here, and this is Treasure of Blizzard. Treasure of Blizzard is a visual novel in fantasy genre. Oh, great. The game is produced in dating sim genre. The release is scheduled for early 2016. Also, the demo version is already available. All right, we have Lynn. Lynn, a childhood friend. <laughs> Russians need, okay, Russians. Yes, you make games, I get it. But please, hire somebody that knows English to do the English part. English grammar, please. Lynn, a childhood friend. By chance, she appeared to be the warden of the main character. The girl is sensitive, however, she hides her real emotions. Her mother is from the Western Kingdoms. May, May, a mysterious landlady and owner of a tavern that locates in the mountain wilderness. She lives alone and her lifestyle is very boring. She would appreciate any traveler she meets, especially if he happens to be a man. Actually, she is the lady, you can guess. Sean. Sean is a secretive white she-wolf. She is interested in ancient magical ruins. Features three characters to start relationship. Over 15 different endings. Mini games, maze, high replay video, available for Windows, Macintosh, and Linux. Our game has received approval from Greenlight. I guess they have a Steam link. You can get a Steam key. They have a Tumblr, Twitter, whatever that BS is. And apparently it's $5. So keep in mind they want $5 for this game, and it's available on Windows, Mac, and Linux. They said something about a demo, but... I guess you can down... Yeah. I guess that's what I'm playing, the demo. Well, anyway. Let's get... Well, oh, wait. They have a video here. They have a video. How can you have a video of a, a graphic novel? I guess... That's what I'm trying to do. Can I zoom in on this a little bit? Yeah. There we go. Wow, that was hurtful. Okay. So no, nope. She's saying some stuff. Yeah, this isn't very interesting. Let's get into it. And we're back. Well, let's get in it. Chapter 1, Mystery House. The dry wind lifts sand and throws it to the eyes. Here comes the stroke of a sword. The opponent, unsuccessfully trying to protect with the shield, red with blood, fell down. Here comes the joy of victory. It's banquet time. A loud roar of your battle buddies, clatter of clinking goblets. The head is unclear. Disjointed mumbling of a herald. Here comes the feeling of anxiety, growing with each second. Cold sweat. Fear. The voice of Governor General of the Northern Lands sounds a handing out a, a sentence. Okay. Despair. Bending down father. The flash of fury. Resignation. Hey you, lie abed. A sudden push took me out of the nightmare. That was a nightmare? Hey, wake up. The weather gets worse and we need to pass through the mountain pass. Ugh. I opened my eyes and feeling relief saw Lynn. You again. I'm sick of trying to see your face in the morning. Of course. It's far from the truth. Despite such terrible incidents, I'm quite happy to see my childhood female friend again. Yeah, female. <laughs> hey, don't worry. Soon our paths will diverge. Getting up, I noticed that the girl glanced uneasily at me, still maintaining her mask of disaffection. You? Uh, another nightmare? Do you care about it? This guy thinks to himself a lot. I think it's a guy. A sulky girl rushed forward, not waiting till I gather my possessing. I took sack. Approximately three years ago, I parted with Lynn, shouting at each other. And now, when we met again, she didn't cool down. As a result, I always turn her aggression back. However, I don't feel that way, like this, honestly speaking. In order to catch up Lynn, I had to hasten my steps. It wasn't too easy, taking into account all my belongings were with me. What'd you hear in the tavern? Okay. 
Now she will start speaking about my deafness and my passion for drinks. Lynn's narrowing her eyes. Maybe she remembers the rumor, or maybe she thinks whether to let me know or not. Probably the last one, because she has a brilliant memory for recollecting all of necessary, unnecessary talks. Do you care? Her, it would be suspicious if she hadn't asked. The weather looks unnatural. I guess it was quite logical to get interested about the reason for the snow in summer, especially when the snowdrifts are quite high. And the English isn't so bad compared to the description. Why didn't you ask your drinking companion about it? It's clear. You've been busy with something else. I assume you need to hear more of... Bleh. I assume you need to hear more of what surrounding people really speak about. Do you know Dynamic Wolves? You can meet them while serving on the border. They say the wolves are hunting in packs. Can you imagine that? Even one wolf is enough to be a great problem. But what if they start hunting together? I sighed to myself. Most of the rumors Lynn used to listen to were of not too great value. They were just nonsense. Besides, I was interested in quite material and quite cold snow. What's wrong with the weather? I just imagine Kang's a dick. <laughs> Maybe you'll listen to m more interesting stuff? I heard the ghosts appeared in the mountains. Can you imagine? The real ghost! Is this Jesus? Lynn was worried so much that she almost fell down, stumbling over a snag of fur hidden somewhere in the snow. I hope we won't meet him as long as you're afraid of magic. She clasped the trunk of the tree and stood erect. Her ears got red. I'm not afraid of it! Lynn got silent. The magic was quite worrying her. But the wish to tell everything was beyond her. You wanted to learn more about the weather, didn't you? They say it's snowing near the mountain pass all year round. It was quite strange. At least the mountains located in two, three day journey from here are covered with snow only on the peaks. Oh, by the way, I heard that they had seen the beastmen before. Why don't they sit around in their holes? Maybe the activity of the dynamic wolves is closely connected with them. Hey, do you follow me? Well, yeah, wolves, the beast men. I was looking around, trying to find a source of steam, silently felt in the air. Okay. The hands were freezing, because they were not protected with gloves. We didn't take either, them or other warm clothes with us, as we didn't expect unnatural cold. Finally, I noticed what I had been looking for. D haven't you been away from this girl for a while? You're all happy about seeing her, and but you don't have cold clothes yet? Cold leather clothes? Anyway. Do you see the geysers? Maybe we could warm ourselves near them. Lynn was obviously not too pleased with the fact her speech had been almost ignored. However, she was quite freezing so that she couldn't refuse to have a rest. Okay, but anyway, we left lodging for the night about an hour ago. I hope you won't stop each time you get frozen. I assume we won't light a campfire here. There was a dried fallen tree near the source of water with steam swirling over the spring. The tree was quite far to let splashes of periodically active geysers reach it, but still it was quite near to get let warm. Having taken one of my bags, Lynn got seated onto the trunk of the tree. Definitely she had made sure there wasn't any ant hill with sparkle frosty ants. She took bread and cheese out of the bag, and cut one slice of each with her dagger. Did she remember I hadn't eaten anything since morning? Don't you want to visit the capital so much? Both bread and cheese set out right to her mouth. Do you want to go there under the circumstances like these? I took away her dagger and cut my breakfast with it. I shouldn't have counted upon Lynn's care about me. You are probably upset, but you know pretty well what could have happened to your father otherwise. What idiot can support the rebels? 
I sighed and swallowed my breakfast. The stuff she had been talking about was just exaggeration. My father didn't support anyone, but he fed and gave a shelter to the refugees from rebellious province. Nothing will happen to you there. They will watch after you in order not to let you go or do something extra. Nothing else. I wish you had come with me to the capital not to serve on the border. You could settle down by the contract. The contacts and nobody could blame you about anything. You again? This stuff about the capital? I told you from the very beginning, I am not the kind of man who grovels before big daddies to get miserable pittance. <laughs> this is so ridiculous. But for some reason I'm enjoying it, so I'm gonna keep going. Lynn jumped up and seized my car and gave me a push into the three near the tree near us. I do not grovel my belly before anybody to get miserable pittance. Oh, let's shake the screen. The impulse of the strike affected the tree and big layers of snow started to fall. Oh, she hit the tree. Ow! Lynn didn't have enough time to step back and one of the snow layers fell onto her head. She fell down with shock. You fall down with shock when snow falls in your head? Are you okay? Thanks to the fact that I was standing near the trunk of the tree, I wasn't touched with the snow. I waited a little bit to let the snow fall to the end and then sat near Lynn to help get rid of the rest of the snow. Snow was friable and soft because the warm spring was quite soft and friable. I hope she... What? <laughs> friable, friable, friable. I hope she won't get ill because such kind of snow constitutes a menace. I'm alright, I too! Well, gee, that wasn't frickin' set up. I watchfully look up, hoping that her sneezing won't make snow fall more than before. Having taken off my cloak, I offered it to Lynn. I don't need it. Take it. I will somehow do without you. She's being very inconsistent. She seems like she was liking him. She pushed the cloak off and sat it on the fallen tree. I saw the freezing struck slightly through her. I don't... This, these characters don't make any sense. Having caught my gaze, she averted her eye, her face. And he seems like a dick. Kane seems like a giant dick, and he's offering a cloak. And then when she, then she's being a dick when he offers it. I, I actually will do without it. But you, you'll be frozen stronger. Take it. <laughs> I won't accept it from a man who thinks I grovel before somebody. You. I didn't let her speak further and covered her soldiers with the cloak. Wow, soldiers with the cloak. Her face was red, and she had pr probably caught a cold already. Yeah, because people catch colds that quickly. The impact was so strong that I found myself in the snow. Lynn's face expressed some kind of guilt feeling, and she averted her face again. The cloak was on snow near me. I actually wanted to help you! Unlike the tender guardians of the capital, I was quite resistant to cold, and couldn't get ill because of small things like this. However, I felt like lying in snow for a while in order to make Lynn speak, so I put my cloak on. I didn't ask you. Are you going to wake up? What a childish behavior. Now you'll be the only one to need a cloak. Hey, there's a quick save button? I didn't even notice. Let's quick save. Quick save complete. Okay. She somehow stood up and came to me. Where'd my mouse go? It's gone. There it is. Start making ve venomous remarks or answer softly. I don't... I guess answer softly. Let's hit on him. <laughs> You're still the same girl of character I liked once. Do you remember us fighting in the snowdrifts? What? What are you talking about? Lynn got even redder and turned aside. Probably her mood got even worse than I had been. I stood up and offered my cloak once again. Lynn, come on, for our childhood friendship's shake. Take the cloak, your stubbornness will make everything worse. She, not looking at me, stretched her hand and took the warm cloak. Having put it on, she awkwardly took away the map. What? We need to go that way. Her voice quit. What, her quit voice was hardly heard. Maybe her cold was even worse than I expected. What is it? Nobody develops a cold in ten minutes. Lynn, won't you light a campfire and make yourself warm? She quickly negatively shook her head, <laughs> putting away the map. Moved 
to the way she had pointed before. I quickly gathered the belongings and followed her. Probably, I should have in insisted on the longer halt. But now, Lynn doesn't look the personality to be persuaded easily. Where's more of the choose my own adventure stuff? This is just reading. The sun started hiding behind the snowy flakes of the hill and the clouds started getting pink. The health of Lynn was quite suspicious to me. Hey, there's two ends this time. Even though I gave her my cloak, she showed the signs of cold. If this situation keeps going, then tomorrow she will be all in because I, of the high temperature. The high temperature. Lynn, what about sleeping in one sleeping bag tonight? Having seen the sword looking right at me, I realized I said something wrong. And I consolatory raised my hands. W what I mean is that you look sick and you need to get warm. I didn't think anything else. Don't worry. I noticed something out of the corner of my eye. It was in the shades of the trees. Did you see that? The striped deer put rushed all of a sudden right out of the bushes and haven't noticed us flashed by our place. Don't sweet talk to me, you pervert. Look, I... The freezing howling sounded through the roaring of the snowstorm. You know, this isn't bad, but I would like a lot less narration. A lot less thinking. Let's just have the characters talk, because this is taking forever. You mentioned you were told about the snowy wolves hunting in pack, didn't you? Now, I didn't worry about the sword aimed at me. When I was in army, there was a rumor about the dynamic beasts that cut away everything in their way. I definitely have my grave doubts about supernatural powers, but I have no intention to meet them without my sword. I do not let Lynn answer, and putting her sword away, take her hand and hurry to move further. We shouldn't stay here. We need to go further. Maybe there will find another prey, and even if they smell us, they won't pursue us. Lynn sheathed her sword back. I noticed with the corner of my eye her face getting redder than usual. You feel worse, don't you? If you like, I can carry you in my arms. What? I am already carrying sacks for the night hall, food, and sleeping bags for me and Lynn. However, if she feels sick, I can carry her too. At least, I experienced worse situations when I was in army. No, no, go ahead, go, you fool! She pushed away me. She pushed away my arm and made distance between us larger. Okay, now she's moving all by herself without staggering out. It's better to keep all forces for something unexpected. We kept going further to the place of mountains pass as quick as the snowstorm led us. Going forward is now getting harder. I also noticed Lynn's legs stumble at every step because of her fatigue. However, my frozen extremities is now moving almost the same way. What is it? Look, am I mistaken? Or I see the light over there? I nodded into direction of light source. If not heavy twilights, I won't notice it because I was heavy snow. Lynn stopped and looked in the pointed direction. I don't see anything. But even if there is something, you know yourself how dangerous the houses and the woods can be. What is this, Hensel and Gretel? When we were kids, we almost died in one of such houses. I put my arm on her shoulder and pushed her toward it to the light. We should risk and check. You don't want to meet the snow beasts, do you? I will handle with wool. I don't mean wolves. You said yourself there was a rumor about the ghosts in the village, didn't you? G -g ghosts? Do you think they may be here? Honestly, I didn't believe in all this stuff, but the threat of being found by the wolves was against my plans. Lynn is a person who is hard to be explained how dangerous these creatures may be. She believes that she will overpower them in any case, and she's hard person to be explained. She can easily die because of cold. The capital milksop is beyond all this stuff. I keep leading her to the side where the light was. Who knows? Maybe there is something. Apparently, someone was living there. The light seemed to attract to visit the house. But who is living here? We could hardly go through the rest of the snowdrifts. The house looks nice and like a usual house. We walked around it and, having gone up the steps, saw the door plate with a bell. The recreation is always welcome in this house. I sighed. The landlord apparently had taste blindness and welcome words. Okay. Well, Marks. 
and signs like, Come and drink as much as you like, attracted me more. It seems to be a guest house. Whoa, I just accidentally rolled my mouse wheel and that happened. I guess I can go back. That's pretty cool. Okay, welcome. It seemed to be a guest house, blah, 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 blah. Oh, so it ends where we last were. Interesting. It seems to be a guest house, but I've never seen such strange thing. Wow, I right-clicked and that happened. Okay, that's what right-clicking does. Having glimpsed at trouble, Lynn, I rang the doorbell. No reaction came. Is anybody there? Do not shout the way like this. We can come inside and let's speak with the landlord inside. Lynn unsheathed her sword. If... Here lives a human being. I don't think the landlord will be happy someone breaks in his house. Not following my words, Line, again misspelling, came inside. I followed her. I hope she won't do anything. Come on, let's get in a fight or something. Take it! Not letting the sword out of her hands, Lynn held out a cloak to me. While I being surprised at the sudden ask, was holding a cloak into one of the sacks. A sound was heard from the second floor. I gestured the girl to be quiet. Oh, here's another girl, here's another girl. Finally, somebody else, or something else. A young gal was gratefully coming down to it, gracefully coming down to us. Having noticed me, she flirtatiously smiled at me. Sorry for the break-in, but we... The girl came closer to me and outstretched her hand to my collar as if she tried to shake off the snow. Her friends touched my cheek. Her fingers touched my cheeks, and I faltered, not being able to finish my speech. Oh, I gotta do This is May. Um, I'm so glad to the guests. It was long ago when someone came into my house. Would you like to stay for a night? I'm always glad to visitors, if they're able to pay, of course. Lynn pushed me away from the landlady. You didn't lose money in snowdrifts, did you? N no wait don't you have money with you do you uh well yep lynn pulled my clothes and angrily whispered in my ear she may be a witch and you're flirting with her i looked in wide-eyed astonishment at blushed lynn saw her getting nervous that was not usual for her are you jealous no having pushed me away lynn aimed the sword at me a couple seconds later, she regained her consciousness and aimed the sword to the stranger girl, thinking she could be more dangerous. The stranger girl kept her cool, taking a bow and gesture of respect. My name is May, and I'm not a witch, young lady. The calmness like this shook Lynn's resoluteness. A consolatory put my hand onto her shoulder and put her sword down with the other hand. My name is Kang, and here is Lynn. Please forgive her, she is afraid of everything supernatural, and she worries about the rumor in her village. Lynn angrily looked at my side. Apparently she didn't like that I mentioned her weakness for magic, but I needed to tell that in order to calm the situation. Don't worry, I get it. Besides, it's truth in some way. Ah, I can't do that very well. Lynn aimed at the girl again. You're the witch, you're the witch, aren't you? May Consolatory raised her hand. No, no, there's nothing like this. I simply heard the ghosts that appeared nearby. Lynn almost jumped to the ceiling. Just hearing about it, she gets to g g g ghosts What is she, Scooby and Shaggy? I sighed and rumpled her hair. Alright, well, we clearly see this one's more talk than action, so let's just see what happens when I click for a while. But anyway, this game... It seems interesting, the broken English, if you can get over that, I'm sure it's a good game. But, as it stands, it's clearly just going to be a lot of reading. It's basically a book. It's a visual novel, it's supposed to be like this. I don't know what, I, I don't know what else to expect, maybe more options. I mean, near -ish the beginning, I was able to say, hey... I want to say something. Oh, there, I can say something nice. I can butter May, or we can question the landlady. So we can, you know, make her like us more, because she wants to question the landlady. And apparently I want to bone Lynn. Whatever. I'm assuming my character's a guy. My character might be a girl. I really don't know. Ooh, it's dark. Oh, look at that. 
And why is there a half-naked girl sitting in front of me? There's some... There's a sexy witch. I guess it's May. And it looks like something's actually happening, and now there's wrong. I was Kong, now I'm wrong. Anyway. I guess that was a dream. And now she's all upset because I'm telling her about it. Now she's happy because I'm telling her I'm suspicious, I'm sure. Click. So yeah, I could I could see myself going through this just to read the story, but... Anyway, I'm just rambling now. You guys get the point. It's a visual novel with very little interaction. There is some, though. I mean, look at me click through this. This is ridiculous. How is there this few interactions and have it still be an interactive novel? But anyway... I guess that's it for, I don't even remember what this call, was called, like a blizzard or something? Hey, a wolf. What was this, a tempest blizzard? I don't know. But in either case, you'll be able to see it in the video description. And of course, it's going to be on, oh, a werewolf. And I'm Kang again. And there's Shan. There's our last girl, yay. But anyway. You can buy it on Ichio if you want. I think it's all demos right now, and you can play the demo for free. And I guess I clicked enough to die. Oh, right. This is the demo. Because the demo is the only one existing. Anyway, that's it. That's what it's called. Treasure of Blizzard. That's it for Treasure of Blizzard. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed. I'm sure it was boring. hope my voice acting wasn't too terribly horrible. But I'm having trouble doing higher voices now. Great. Anyway, ta!